Um, hi. All right, hello guys. Welcome back to my channel. If you are brand new here, my name is Nikki and this is my book nook. Um, okay guys. <laughs> Today, we are talking about Hopeless by Colleen Hoover, and if you guys have been watching me for any amount of time, you know I have the utmost adoration and respect and love for Miss Colleen Hoover. I think she is the most incredible author. I always say she can do everything. She can do no wrong. She can write anything. She just has such a unique voice and way of storytelling that just catches you off guard every time, makes you feel things you didn't know you could feel. Long story short, I love Colleen Hoover and I am always the first to sing her praises. This is the 10th book of hers that I've actually read, which I just was doing that math and I'm like, okay, that's a little bonkers because each one of her books, I just fly through them and it just, they're such a good time. I mean, a lot of times they're a very emotional time, but still like you just fly through them so it doesn't even feel like I've read 10 of her books because it's just like, you go through them so fast and they're just such an experience. I don't know. But, <sighs> I hate to say this, but like I said, have read 10 of her books and this is the first one that I can just straight up say I didn't like. And I'll get into why, but I have to give you guys a spoiler free sort of synopsis first as always and then I'll dive a little bit deeper. Um, so yeah. Let's just talk about it. So one thing to note right off the bat is this story is way more YA than Colleen Hoover's other books, at least the ones that I've read. I think all of her books that I've read have actually been about adults or at least people out of high school where this story is actually about a girl that's still in high school and takes place in a high school. So just very different from what I'm used to, but it is one of her earlier books. So maybe some of her other stories I just haven't read yet are set in high school. I don't know, but this story follows this girl named Skye. Um, she has grown up her entire life. She was adopted at a very young age and she just has a single mother and her mom is very quirky and different. She's kind of a hippie. She doesn't believe in like TV or the internet. She thinks it rots your brain. Um, she's not really about sugar either. She kind of like makes money by selling things at like trade shows and craft shows. Like she's just, I don't know, a little eccentric. But um, Sky loves her. She's her best friend in the entire world. She's really young, so they get along really well. But Sky's just had a very different upbringing. She's also been homeschooled her entire life. So this story takes place right before Sky's senior year of high school, and this is going to be the first time Sky is actually going to public school. She's wanted to go to public school for a while, and her mom is like, "Okay, it's your senior year. Um, if you want to finish out school in person in high school with other kids, like." Now's the time you can go. So um, Skye has a really good friend next door that she's grown up with, that she's always hung out with, but it just so happens that that friend has been accepted to go on like a foreign exchange program. So she's actually not gonna be here for this year of her high school, which wasn't in the cards, but Skye's like, you know what, it's fine. She was hoping to have a friend with her going into this high school that she doesn't know anybody at, but she's like, it's fine, this is what I want, I can figure it out on my own. So right about the time that Skye's getting ready to start school, it's like the end of summer, she ends up coming across this boy named Holder, um, like runs into him at the grocery store and she overhears a conversation between him and someone else and it's apparent that Holder, something happened with Holder and that he has not been in town for a very long time, he goes to this high school but hasn't been going to this high school, there's kind of like a rumor mill about it. I don't know. He's very attractive, of course. He's got this total like bad boy vibe that she's instantly kind of drawn to. She's like, I don't know. And then she ends up like leaving the grocery store and he kind of chases after her and she's like, hi, how are you? And they just have this very weird interaction. Um, he just acts a little strange and he's like, I feel like I know you from somewhere. Have we met before? And she's like, that's a cute pickup line. No, we haven't met before. I don't know. It was just a strange interaction. You could just tell like something was up with him, but, and she's very attracted to him, but she's like, I don't know, he's kind of weird, I don't know the vibes going on here, whatever. So from there, like, Skye starts high school, she has a really hard time, because there's just like, this is a super small town, I guess, and there's rumors about her, and rumors about her friend, blah, 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 it's like, totally over the top, the way she's been like, bullied, people are leaving like, horrible notes on her locker, like, she's just not having, a great experience but she's like determined to push through she ends up making friends with this like one kid that's also kind of an outcast and she kind of goes to this friend for intel because 
Holder is not currently going to high school there. It was clear that he should be going to high school there and he was, but he's kind of like dropped out. Like she doesn't know what's going on. So she like goes to this friend to find out more about Holder. And apparently there's like a rumor that he got like he beat up this kid and that he beat him like half to death and he got sent to juvie and that's where he's been and now he's back but he's like not going to school and like Holder's a bad boy and you should stay away from him sort of thing. Um, but even though she's told that, Holder just keeps like wiggling his way back into her life. Yada yada, things happen. Like that's kind of the extent of the spoiler free version of this story. It's just like Sky transitioning from homeschool to going to public school, this boy entering her life that's mysterious and strange and very bad boy. Um, I mean, another thing about Sky too that I didn't mention is like she also, she's had interactions with boys throughout the years. Again, like her friend lived right next door and she's gone to this public school. So she's like hung out with guys. She's done things with guys, but she's just never felt anything. She's never felt that spark and she's like, I don't know and so Holder's the first person that like really makes her feel something and she's like oh like he feels weird like he seems weird I feel like I should stay away from him but also like I'm just drawn to him and he's the first person that actually gives me like butterflies in my tummy what is this I don't know um and that's kind of the premise of the story and it seems simple enough like when it started out I was intrigued obviously because it's a Colleen Hoover story she knows how to pull you in like I mean Sky's character was not like the most intriguing thing ever, but I was intrigued by the idea of like never having gone to public school and then going for your senior year. Like that's kind of a big jump and going totally by yourself. So the beginning was a little intriguing. The Holder thing was a little intriguing. And then kind of like in the middle, I felt like there was like a lull where I was just like, I don't know. There was a lot of like back and forth with Holder. It just felt a little bit slow for me. And again, like I think just because I know what to expect from a Colleen Hoover book and this book being set in high school is just something very different um, and very kind of like juvenile. Like there's just, oh, there's so, only so much you can do I feel like in a high school setting. I don't know. I feel like I'm trying to like make up excuses but I'm just trying to say like I found the middle to be a little bit slow for me and you know, not, not super exciting. But <sighs> where I had an issue was like the middle towards towards the end, right? The sort of like climax of the book where inevitably, because it's Colleen Hoover, something's gonna be revealed, there's gonna be a plot twist, something is going to come out of nowhere and slap you in the face. Like there's always something deeper happening. It's never just a cute little love story. There's always secrets, connections, like stuff that you don't know is going to happen because it's Colleen Hoover and she's truly a genius. But this book and this plot twist and what happened here was so vile and disgusting to me. Like, I am not a sensitive snowflake, okay? I'm really not. And I know when I read a Colleen Hoover book, there's a good chance I'm gonna be upset. At some point or another, she knows how to make you hurt. She knows how to make you question your freaking life. She knows how to make you emotional. I get it. So I know to expect that, but what this book was about and what secrets were hidden within it were just so next level gross and horrible. And it just felt like a big trauma dump. Like people make jokes about certain books being like trauma porn. And I'm always like, okay, yeah. But this book, like it deserved that title. It just was so much, so much and so gross. And to the point that it just wasn't enjoyable and it just went in a whole different direction. And I was just like nauseated. Like you can read things that are tough to read and it can really make you think and it can put you in like these characters shoes and make you understand like certain subjects that you might've looked at from far away before and maybe judged because you didn't know much about him and now you feel like you're in those characters shoes and you're almost experiencing it yourself like calling him were so good at doing that but this book just with what it was and everything that happened it's just like i didn't care to be in those shoes and also it was just it was just wild i just felt like it was too much i felt like she went off the rails and to be honest what it was about I, like i am not a, i'm i'm not a big person that's like I don't know, trigger warnings, I know this is kind of like a touchy subject because some people like, I, I get the need for trigger warnings, right? I totally do, especially when it comes to a book like this, but oftentimes I'm like, I don't wanna know trigger warnings, I will never look at them because I feel like they're oftentimes 
like spoilers for things that happen throughout the story and you know if you go into a book knowing like a trigger warning you'll be like looking for those signs and i feel like what's so good about colleen hoover is again she puts you in those character shoes and she kind of makes you experience these things for yourself so i don't look at the trigger warnings i had no idea what was happening going to it ends with us like i didn't know what that book was about and because of that i felt like that book was so impactful it hurt me it that book also like made me hurt but it just didn't like disgust me in the way that this book did and you probably think i'm being dramatic but i was reading this i read this on my kindle and i read my kindle when i go to the gym like i walk on the treadmill and i'll, I'll read my kindle and there were parts of this that i was literally like i feel like i'm about to trip on this treadmill and just like fall off because <laughs> i was like like i was like physically like eh, like gagging, cringing, like it made me so uncomfortable. And it's just not at all clear going into this book what it's going to be about. And I think if you're someone that has dealt with what this book is about, like it would be horrible, horrifying. Like, and there's multiple things. And it just, I don't know. I didn't like it, I didn't like it, and I love Colleen Hoover, and I will say, the way that she wrote it, the way she revealed things, obviously it was, like, fantastic. I mean, I, I do feel like, compared to her other books, I saw some of this coming. I think she hinted at certain things a little too hard to where I got the idea of what was maybe coming, um, but certain aspects of it I had no idea, and when I found out, I was really mind blown. Like, there were pieces that I was like, oh, wow, like, this is crazy, but just overall, it was a no. Like I would not recommend anybody to read this book. And I feel horrible saying that because Colleen Hoover deserves all the praise and love, but I just think that this book and this series, the reason I started reading this book is because I've been wanting to read All Your Perfects forever now. Everybody is constantly messaging me, asking me if I've read that, but I know that All Your Perfects technically connects to the Hopeless series. like. There's Hopeless, and then I can't remember the names right now, like Losing Hope, I think, and then Finding Perfect? <laughs> Something like that. There's a novella in the middle that connects the Hopeless series to All Your Perfects. So I've been waiting to read All Your Perfects because I was like, I wanna read the Hopeless series first. I want to like catch all the Easter eggs. I want the full experience, but I absolutely will not be reading the rest of the series. Like I have no interest. It, it was just, Okay, I want to talk about spoilers now. So if you haven't read this book yet, I would exit. But this is me saying I love Colleen Hoover and I will continue to read the rest of her books. But this book was a solid no for me. And I think that the way it's... Uh, I think I when I'm seeing people recommend it, like, oh, this book is so good. And when I'm seeing it, like, all on display now, like, at Target and, like, Barnes & Noble and stuff, I'm just like, this book is so, like, traumatizing. Like, it's just, I don't know. It makes me nauseous and it's upsetting and I don't, I didn't love it. But that was just me. If you haven't read this yet and you're still wanting to try it after everything I said, um, exit, cause now I'm gonna get into some specific details. Okay. I think that it was fairly obvious that there was abuse in this book, right? Whenever we started to see these flashbacks from Sky of her like, clearly being younger and in her room and like not wanting the doorknob to turn. I was just like, oh my God, okay. Like I could tell that there was some abuse coming and that it was most likely from her dad. Like that, that seemed obvious to me, but it's like when it was actually something and it wasn't even like it got super graphic, but just the description of him like coming into her room and giving her the toy and the nightgown and all that stuff. Like it just made me so nauseated and grossed out and then when she goes and like confronts the dad and figures it out and then just in a matter of I feel like 30 pages total, her reliving and visualizing and explaining to us in her mind, her father literally like R-wording her as a child and then her confronting her dad and him proceeding to blow his head off in front of her and hold her her being covered in his blood and then f running back to their hotel and then proceeding to fuck five minutes later. Sorry, excuse my French. What the fuck was that? What the fuck was that? That was disgusting. Like, I, 
I don't know. Her whole explanation of like, he's the only person that's ever had me. I need you to have me and erase him. Disgusting. Like, I'm sorry. Like I get, like I get the mentality of it, but not the time and not the place. And I was still so nauseated by the original scene. And then we experience a suicide right in front of us and you not even five minutes later or now now's the time that we're gonna have sex right now practically still covered in your dad's blood no thank you um and then finding out that her mom is actually her dad's sister and that he also did these horrible things to her growing up like i was so grossed out like, I am just like, I don't, I, I don't know. I can deal with some pain. I can deal with some crazy shit. I read some crazy books, okay? But it's just got to a point in this story for me where it was just no longer enjoyable. Like, I think the reveal of Holder always knowing her and her name being Hope and the Hope and the Less with Leslie. Also, finding out that Holder's sister had killed herself because... Sky's dad had also been like abusing her. Like it was just so much. I'm like, you can give me one trauma, okay? I can deal with one, but you've got multiple suicides in this story. You've got multiple people being like molested as children. You've got like, just there was just, I guess that's it. But I don't know, the culmination of all of it at once on top of like, I, like I couldn't even enjoy Sky and Holder's love story because it just felt so like trauma bond e, but like not in a cute way. And by the time, like I already was iffy about them and then I was kind of okay with them. And then once all this started to get revealed, it just seemed not healthy. And like, they just, I, I don't know. I'm concerned, I'm very concerned and I just didn't, I didn't vibe with it. Also, him getting a tattoo of Hope Less and it's Hope and Leslie and I guess it was clever, but it just freaked me out a little bit. All of it all together. The way that they just so happened to like cross each other's paths again and him not tell her all this time that she was Hope and it's just a no for me, dog. <laughs> like it's a no. I. I feel, I never thought I would sit here and be like ranting about a Colleen Hoover book, but I, th this was like my, maybe my, yeah, probably my least favorite book I've read this year, just about. Um, but that's how I feel. I see a whole lot of people loving Hopeless and recommending Hopeless, not that much, like definitely of her books. Like I feel like it's one of the ones I see least talked about, but still, I don't know. No, I don't think it should be sitting on the shelves in Target where any child could walk by and grab it personally, but um, that's just how I feel. I don't know. I'm going to read Colleen Hoover's other books and I cannot wait. I'm sure they'll all be great, but this one was just, no. Um, I feel like I'm repeating myself. I would love to hear y'all's thoughts. Maybe you loved it. Um, I don't know, <laughs> but that is it for me today. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will talk to you very soon.